Everyone has their own favorite shows. Some of them may have affected them positively and helped them progress as a person, helping them through hard times, or maybe they just relate to certain things in the show. Or maybe even it's just a really enjoyable use of their time. Whatever their reasons for listing their favorites as their own, there's usually a personal attachment to at least one of those series that's very hard to break. We probably all have a series we look past the problems of because of how it helped us develop as a person, a fan, or because of our nostalgia for the show itself. The shows I discuss today are going to be shows that have moved me personally. They aren't necessarily my top favorite shows, but they influenced me to find my overall favorites, changed me for the better, or helped me through some of my lowest times in life. Hopefully, as we travel through these shows, I can spark memories of when you watched certain shows, or maybe even the same ones. We're going to be starting off with Rosario and Vampire. It's not an amazing anime by way of any kind of rating analysis or critique. It's woefully average, and it doesn't have much in terms of a story beyond the bare skeleton that it took from the manga, but it's just plain fun hits, music, and the start of my undying love for Takahiro Koyasu. They're all encompassed here. This was the anime that put me on the path of looking for more anime. I seriously watched this show like three times within a month. I thought it was that good. You can crucify me now if you want. Demon King Daimao, Shuffle, Sekirei, Heaven's Lost Property, Girls Bravo, they'd all follow this show, and Rosario Vampire would remain one of my favorites for some time. I kind of wish I could find another show like this, and look at it the same way I did almost 10 years ago. I was obsessed with some of the music from this show for some time, and actually despite the negative criticism the second season receives for being mostly non-canon material, I fucking love. Takahiro Koyasu's performance of Hyakumen Kai no Jetan. The English version was my entryway into the series, and I honestly didn't mind that version of the song either, but most of the English songs did bother me. I've been meaning to go back and try rewatching it in Japanese, but I think I'd rather let this show stay a fond memory and just enjoy the music it had to offer. While Rosario Vampire could essentially be considered what made me love anime, there was that one obvious point in time where I didn't know what anime was. And for years, I remember a show with a giant purple and green robot, and a military organization trying to take out aliens. I'm sure it's no surprise by the music you're hearing and the description I'm giving that I mean none other than Neon Genesis Evangelion. But it wasn't that simple to me. You see, while I was a wee youngin' to the world of anime, I wasn't sure what the name of the show was, and I had no idea how I could go about finding it. I remembered an organization named Holy in it, though, and I searched for it, and if you know the slightest thing about Ava, you'd know I'm already setting myself on the wrong path. Just by looking at the first episode of the show I ended up on, Scryed, I knew it wasn't the show I was looking for, and decided to come back to it at a later date. I remember one day watching YouTube videos and stumbling upon the first episode of Evangelion, and it clicked in my mind that this is the show I was looking for as soon as I saw the opening. Evangelion really was my gateway into watching shows that weren't like what I've seen before. I quickly followed it up with the Serial Experiments Lane, The Future Diary, Eden of the East, and Perfect Blue solidifying psychological anime as one of my favorite genres to this day. Up to this point, I didn't see a show that emotionally moved me though. It wasn't until I re-watched Evangelion with my cousin that I started to actually look at it more and saw similarities between me and Shinji with the rough relationship I had with my father at the time. Of course, Ava's representation of it was much more exaggerated than my situation, but I was able to relate to Shinji and he was the first character in any form of fiction that I actually resonated with on a deeper level than thinking he looked awesome. I had my fictional favorites before, like Albel Knox from Star Ocean Till the End of Time, or Vincent Valentine from Final Fantasy VII, but I didn't relate to them like I did with Shinji. By the way, can you feel the edge yet? Pretty much the same year I watched Ava, I started going down a list of some of the most popular shows I figured I should watch which I've still yet to complete because there's just way too many anime out there and not enough time. 
Eventually, I watched Clan End, and I cried because of Tomoya's relationship with his father. It was a much more relatable thing to me. I felt Tomoya's anger towards his father, because I felt my own anger towards my own father. It was an emotional journey for me, and it was actually hard to get through some of the episodes, because it reminded me of the times before all the problems, and it made me hope that it would all go away. But I still wanted to see how Tomoya found himself through these problems. Maybe I could learn something from this little piece of animation that would help me. As you could probably imagine, that wasn't the case. I just found something to bury my emotions in. But it convinced me that, you know, maybe as bad as I think things are, they really aren't as bad as I can sometimes make them out to be. And in time, things might work out in the end. Surely I've had a rough time with my relationship with my dad since then, but looking back on it, I was pretty much right. Certain things had to happen, time had to pass, and we both just needed some time to ourselves. Surely I still miss what it was like before, but I think it's the next show that really turned me this way. One of the biggest problems between me and my dad was our aunt. She was a great woman, don't get me wrong, but they had their issues, and it bled into the problems I had with my dad. So everyone would argue. When she passed away, after living with her for a few years, I had to change my entire way of life. I was a comfortable college kid who only worked part-time for some extra money in my pocket, and I was thrown into the situation of having to fend for myself for the first time in my life. Working one 10-hour-a-week job wasn't cutting it, and I quickly became pretty down over the whole situation. I began to have feelings of inadequacy when I didn't hear back from other places to try to get a second job. Luckily, the place I was at really liked me, and I eventually took up more hours during the holidays. I began to train new employees, eventually becoming full-time there. The damage from my situation had already been done, though, as the place I was living in was pretty much falling apart, and I still couldn't afford to keep it maintained. It was pretty awful. It was the first time I was genuinely ever depressed. Though, I'm really glad I went through all of it. It taught me a lot. And without Kaiji, I don't think the situation would have been the same. You see, if you haven't seen Kaiji yet, and you're someone who is or has lived in poverty, with the hope that one day you might just win the lottery or make it big at the casino, you owe it to yourself to watch it. Kaiji is an extremely high-stakes show where someone who has nothing left to lose gives just about anything to try to get their foot in the door for a normal life. I never quite felt as low as Kaiji did, but just knowing that someone, even if they were a fictional character, could feel worse than I did was comforting. Kaiji is probably the one show that I'm comfortable saying kept me going. Just the idea of it could always be worse allowed me to power through the bad and get to a better place. Maybe that's not the best advice for everyone, but it worked for me. But this isn't a video you should be coming to looking for life advice now, is it? Rather, I want you to think about shows that might have affected you in some way. Maybe similar ways to the shows that I've listed. There's more to anime than just looking for tight writing or great world building. Sometimes, shows like Sword Art Online are just what we need at a certain time in our life, and we carry fond memories and a personal attachment to that show for that reason. But that's reason enough for us to love it, despite what anyone else might say. I want to thank those that have pledged to me on Patreon, especially Justin Shipman, 